What's good everybody? It's your boy Chaz Custom, Custom Model Cars. A big shout out to everybody and much props. Thank you all for your comments. Appreciate it very much. Got another model kit review for you guys. It is the uh, Monogram 64 Pontiac GTO. It's in 124 scale. Um, this is not the 2-in-1. This one I believe uh, might, might be the uh, first issued 64 Pontiac GTO. This one was uh, issued back in 1985. So it is molded in red uh, as most kits were in the 80s. They are they're usually molded in color. So, but overall, it's a very very nicely detailed kit. Unfortunately, there's a lot of parts that are molded together, and it's kind of a letdown on that part. But um, on a scale of one through ten, I give this kit a seven, uh, due to the fact because all the detailing on it's very nice and everything. And then you have uh, two different options for the uh, body style, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But for now, here is the uh, pictures of the uh, built model kit itself. And of course your box art on each side of the box is the same. And then here you have your brief history of the vehicle. And you have it in several languages. So and then the model car itself. Now I've seen this this built up, you know, different versions. But um, let's go ahead and crack this box open and see why this one earned a 7 rating. Okay, first off you're going to find um, the instructions, of course. And it gives you a little brief history of the car, some information. I mean, basically, this is pretty old school, you guys, you know? This is really old school. And then there's your paint guide right down here. Some more information there. And here's your um, body option here. You can make this a two-door coupe, or you can make this strictly a hard top, which I like the hard top version, to be honest. It saves trouble in trying to glue in the glass. <laughs> but um, very nice um, basic instructions, of course. Once you open it, you find your decals, and all you get are license plates. Okay, um, so again, uh, basic, you know, instructions, easy to, easy to read, don't know about easy to understand, nicely illustrated, so, but uh, that's that, those are the decals, um, I'm not going to get into the body just yet, I want to get into the parts, now I believe that there are some things that have been assembled by me, um, such as this rear axle, which has got the, uh, springs already um, attached but this one does have the molded in um, exhaust exhaust pipes and the traction bars I really wish that the uh, pipes would be a little separate and I'm not a big fan of the uh, the hole in the uh, the rear axle either but it is what it is um, it needs a little minimal cleanup and I do apologize that my camera is not showing that good on the, uh, on the on the part because it's so red so you got to chrome your own exhaust tips. You got to do your own thing. Um, you got to clean up, really clean it up, because this one's almost close to being closed. So, but overall, it's very nicely detailed. I love the springs; they fit very well in there. Just took a little bit to get them lined up, but those are really nice. And on this parts tree, you have your radiator, you have your um, steering wheel, the four-spoke steering wheel. Uh, you have your steering pump right here. And you have your firewall detail, just like uh, reminiscent of the old Chevelles that we've all put together. Um, it does have a molded in um, master cylinder and everything like that, which another letdown on that part. And then you got your stock headers, and you have your drive shaft, which is really, really nice. Um, some of these parts have been separated. Some of them fell off the tree. Um, here's the engine that I put together because it's going to be painted the same, you know, uh, paint. This one has the uh, molded in um, oil pan with the molded in starter which looks really goofy to be honest and then you have your molded in um, your molded in oil filter too, too. So those are another letdown. The engine overall is really really nice. I glued the heads on there and then I glued the uh, manifold which has got the tricarb set up and I glued on the um, the water pump itself. So, better than that, um, actually the water pump is the whole front end front engine assembly, which the um, the this little fuel filter is actually uh, already molded in. So, but overall it's really nicely detailed. But it's just a, you know let down of having some molded in parts. You know what I mean? It could have been a little more detailed. But it is what it is. And here you have your hood with the um, 
again with the uh, the hood scoops that are not functional you got your molded in um, hinges and you got the underside detail as well which you got to clean up some pin marks so that's another letdown got to be careful with those and then of course you have your seats and these were really difficult to get together because you have the backs and you have the front and you have to just be careful because you got the side trim but these are nicely detailed um, seats for the Pontiac very nice and then of course on this one you have your armrest, you have your distributor, your fan, the backs to your uh, wheels, and then your alternator, and then you have your um, fan belt, pulley assembly, and then you got your rear shocks. You have your front end here with the molded in steering link and sway bar. And then here you have your upper and your lower radiator hose along with your um, A-arms, upper A-arms for the front. And then of course your classic uh, GTO dash, nicely detailed. It's got some nice details molded in. So, very minimal cleanup. And this little piece is the uh, nose piece that goes in um, in between, which is this one right here. Okay, now we're going to move on to the bigger pieces here. This one is the chassis. It's very nicely molded and detailed, as you can see. Um, there you go. Very minimal cleanup, maybe around the edges. And uh, the fender wells really don't cover the gaps that well, and this is kind of, kind of a letdown as well. You might need to have to cover these on your own, or just, you know, paint them black on the inside or something. So, but that's the only thing. But other than that, it's very nice. And it seems like all the parts um, fit together very nicely on there as well. Here's the, um, the interior tub to the um, car. You've got your pins to where it's going to sit, and then you've got your tabs to where it's going to hook up to the body. Um, there's your uh, rear seat molded in with the rear deck. You got your molded in door panels, center console and pedals, which I'm not a big fan of, um, of molded in center consoles or pedals, but it is what it is. You know, that's just kind of a letdown. You got your molded in window cranks and of course, um, yeah, the, the, you know, the armrests go in here as well. So pin marks you're not going to see because the seats are going to sit over it and it does have a molded in um, carpet texture and stuff. So but very nice detailing overall and then here's the body that you could turn into a coupe or a hard top by removing you know the pillar here but um, I guess with a good polish you know you can really turn this body out without having to spray paint it it does have your molded in door handles your windshield wipers your battery your washer bottle and some details uh, the radiator uh, support is very very bland not a lot of detail going on with that as you can see which is another letdown, but it's all good. But the battery's nicely detailed. Uh, the body's really, really nice. There's not a lot of flash, not a lot of cleanup needed. You got your GTO badging there, and then you got the little badge down in here. I do apologize if, if this is not coming out correctly, but hopefully you guys can see, you know, the car and everything. So there's the rear end, there's the front again, and here's this side. So maybe just a little trimming, you know, around the fender wells, but other than that, it's a really, really nice body. Okay, here are the clear parts. You've got your um, your headlights, which are nicely detailed. And those are on there, and you just got to carefully trim these off and whatever. You got to be very careful because it's really thick around the edges. So, And then here you have your clear red taillights as well. I do not know why they include four when it looks like there's only two. So I'll have to look more into that and see what's up. So and Then you got these ugly pegs again. You know, it's funny. And you got extra, you know, plastic protruding out of it. And here you have your windshield, which has got the rear windshield. Or the, uh, this is the back of the windshield, and this is the front of the windshield. I'm sorry, I got a little confused because of the pin, the pin marks. But um, you got a little hole for where your rear view mirror is going to go. But you do need to construct your own sun visors or um, snag it from another kit. My windshield did break, so you have to be very careful, and I had to glue it back together, which kind of ruins the whole look of the model now, but it's all good. Um, you get your side windows uh, molded in, but you do need to do a lot of uh, sanding and trimming around the edges. Get rid of some of the excess plastic, because it's very thick. So well, that's that one. And then, of course, if you're going to stick with the coupe version, you also get these um, side windows as well. And again, you got to be careful trimming these off. But very nice not scratched or anything. Okay, before I get into the um, rim and tires, let me go ahead and get into the um, chrome tree really fast. Here you have your um, front grille molded in with the uh, front bumper. It's all one piece. 
but very nicely detailed and you do have your um, license plate bracket already in you just got to paint your turn signals amber orange and you're good to go there's the rear bumper which needs to be re maybe a little bit there's a little blemishes in it um, you got your valve covers and then before we go up there you have your rear um, tail light assembly see that's what I mean by um, why do they include four tail lights hmm makes you wonder but then here's your shifter there's your rear view mirror your side mirror which needs to be cleaned and then probably um, re-chromed or something then you have your um, fan clutch which is uh, this circular thing here and then you got your filler tube your rear license plate bracket which goes onto the back of here and um, you've got your air, the air vents for your um, or the um, the vent trims I guess on the hood so that's what those are then you've got your three um, air filters and your four knockoffs this one you need to do some trimming and stuff which is kind of kind of a letdown but it's all good and then you got your tricarb set up here too as well so a lot of nice detailed parts on this tree and those knockoffs they go to these these stock rims which are really cool you got the nice lettering on the uh, side of the tires and you got the nice tread but there's a little bit of flash which is fine but what's what takes away from the tires is the flash on the side of the tires as you can see it's not an easy thing to remove so but yeah but that's that so that's the end of my uh, my review on the uh, monogram 64 Pontiac GTO hopefully you guys enjoyed thank you for letting me share and um, Hopefully you guys can find, you know, this kit or another version of it and make it part of your collection. So stay tuned for uh, more model kit reviews or more videos. And uh, until then, you guys, keep your heads up no matter what through all the struggles. Keep hope, keep faith, keep up the great work. Keep on building those models. Keep doing what you're doing. And until the next video, you guys, it's your boy Chaz Customs, Custom Model Cars, and I'm signing out. Peace.